Hey Flosstube, Sean here. It's been a while. It's been a long while. Um, <laughs> I uh, last video I put up was January eighth, and at the time I uh, intended to do at least monthly, if not biweekly, videos at that time. And life just threw some stuff at us and I didn't really have the motivation and mental space for, for stitching. Uh, and at that time it was a little rough anyway, cause I was just starting a new job. So, uh, wasn't sure if it was going to be at that time, if it was going to be monthly or biweekly videos. Cause I didn't know how the training for my job, how much, you know, how, how much energy I'd have with learning a new job, which I'm still at. Um, not, nothing happened with my job. Uh, but life just threw some, uh, some kind of emotional stuff at us this year and I'll get into it a little bit, but, uh, I want to do, I want to get back into things. Uh, I'm finally kind of at a place where I feel I want to and can, um, and so I'm going to start with what my next to last video was, was a end of year whip parade. So I, in November of last year, I put up my 2022 end of year whip parade and then I did the January 8th video and I've been gone. So this is my 2023, uh, whip parade. It's going to be both full coverage and non, -co and non full coverage. And I'll kind of talk a little bit about what's been going on through the year as well. And, uh, where I've been. Um, in fact, I'll get into that while I get a couple of things. First couple of things I'm going to show set up. Uh, and then most of it is just going to be random however I pull it out of the tub. But I have three things here that uh, need to come out of their cue snaps to show the full thing. So while I get those set up, I'll start talking about what's happened since I last filmed. Um, first off, let me show you. I did have a finish. Uh, since I last filmed. Uh, I showed it on my Instagram, which I also haven't been very good at posting stuff on Instagram. Um, but I was never very good at posting stuff on Instagram. I'm just not good. At, I'm not good at social media. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I changed, I just, re just remembered, yeah, I changed the name of the channel, did one video under, the, I don't even know if I did a video under the new name. I, the, January video might have still been under Lost in Books, Film and Floss. And I might have changed the name shortly after that and then never posted a video under Sean P. Stitches. Um, but that is still the name of the channel. It's going to stay the name of the channel. Uh, it's staying a prim primarily a floss, staying a floss tube channel. If I ever decide to do book-related videos again, I will just start a new channel and start from scratch on that, but I don't see that happening. I'm still not reading a ton. I still enjoy reading, obviously, but I'm still haven't, I'm still not reading. My reading isn't, isn't to booktube levels that, you know, and I just want to enjoy reading and not worry about reading so I can make videos. Floss tubes, I, I, I stitch almost every day anyway, so it's floss tube. I should, as long as long as I get to making the videos, I should be okay on that. But anyway, I did finish the Super Mario Brothers chart. Uh, I need something behind this. So, this was my finish last year. And really, since I've started stitching, uh, other than an IT crowd piece that I might run into here. And if I do run into it, I'll show it again. Um... But I finished this in mid-January, uh, maybe a week or so after I posted that video. And it's just been sitting down down here at my desk. Um, I don't work down here anymore, but <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, so that's that's just, that that's my that's my finish. <laughs> it took me way too long to finish that. Um, so anyway, I posted that January eighth video. And I was getting ready to film another one. And on 
January 30th, we had something happen with one of our cats. Uh, she had been, our cat Gracie had been, something had been going on with her for uh, a few weeks. And we knew we, we'd had her to the vet. All her blood work came back fine. Her stool sample came back fine. Um, and we kind of thought it was something dental because she was, act, she had had a dental issue before where she'd had to have a tooth pulled and she was acting, she was acting almost the same way. So we had her scheduled for a dental. It originally wasn't even supposed to be until mid February, her dental. And, uh, I could just tell she was, she, she, something was going on. She, she needed to get in sooner. So I called the vet because we had it scheduled with the vet who was taking care of her because our, our normal vet, uh, moved out of state. So we had, we've been kind of testing out a couple of other vets, you know, in the same, in the same building, in the same, same veterinary practice. Um, and we found one we liked, so we wanted, you know, she, and she had, she had been the one doing Gracie's care for this issue. So we wanted, you know, obviously wanted to try and stick with her for the dental, but she didn't have a slot that she was doing those dental, she, that she was doing dentals until mid, about mid February, I think it was. And I could just tell like that around the, on the 29th, I could just like, she she needed to get seen sooner so i called the vet's office and said okay if you do you have anything uh sooner can we get her in sooner just with any vet just with any vet it doesn't have to be this specific doctor and you know of course they were probably they were kind of booked up but they put me on the list to uh to be called if they had a cancellation and then about a half an hour later, I got a phone call that there was a cancellation and they could get her in the next day. So we set it up. We got, we got her, we took her in that morning and they asked us while we were there if, um, you know, since, since she was going to, since she was sedate, since she was already sedated before the, the appointment, they have to they have put her fully under for the dental, but they're, they give her sedatives beforehand, uh, to, you know, kind of calm her down before the appointment even happens. So, uh, since she was already kind of sedated, they could do a full body x-ray and we originally weren't going to do it, but we decided like last, like spur of the moment while we, when we were dropping her off that, yeah, okay, you know, she's, she's getting, she's about, I think she was about nine years old and, we decided, you know, all right, it was probably a good idea to go ahead and do this, um, do the full body x-ray. So we drop her off. They do the full body x-ray and we get a phone call saying, uh, you guys need to come in. We can't not, we cannot put her under for the dental. Uh, we, the x-ray showed fluid in her lungs. And if we put her under, we may not be able to bring her back out. So... We picked her up and the vet went over things with us and recommended we take her down to, uh, take her over to a specialist and they made, they made, a, they made a referral appointment with us like for an hour later with, uh, another vet and we took her in and they did a scan on her and found something in her stomach that they believed to be cancer and had spread and metastasized, uh, how do you pronounce that word, uh, into her lungs. And that's what was causing the fluid in her lungs. And though, of course, the recommendation was, you know, euthanasia. And they said they could drain the fluid and keep her, you know, and really figure out what was going on. But it, Chances are the result was going to be the same. And they they had her in an oxygen tank so she could breathe better. They said the fluid in her lungs is slowly suffocating her. Um, and so, and they also said that they could drain the fluid, but because there was so much of it, there's things that they couldn't see. And there was there would be a risk that... Uh, they could puncture something and lose her right there. So we made the decision to make an appointment with our regular vet because we wanted 
you know, if we were going to lose her, we wanted to lose her there because they had done the euthanasia on our previous two that we had lost. So if at all possible, we wanted to do it there. And so we were able to get an appointment that afternoon and we took her home and spent uh, a few hours with her and uh, had to say goodbye to her that night. And that's how the dental appointment turned out. So that was a hit, an emotional hit for me. Uh, a week later, I got COVID. Uh, so that wasn't, I mean, it wasn't bad. I, I wasn't, um, I, I didn't get like super sick. Um, it really it felt like allergies. And the only reason I even took a test was because my wife was in a show and her closing weekend was supposed to be that weekend. And so out of an abundance of caution for her and her castmates, I took a, I took a COVID test because it just felt like I was having a, a, my normal allergy issues because the weather was changing and it just felt like allergies. So I took a test and I came out positive and I had seen, you know, several people involved in her show the night before. Um, cause I did, a, I did, a, I went to an audition the night before, um, which I didn't get the part, but, um, my wife got into the show, um, so there was this whole big thing. Like I, I lived in the spare bedroom for 10 days, um, until I tested negative. And then her, her show got, uh, postponed because somebody, somebody in the cast also ended up testing positive. Not, not due to me. Uh, she, what I figured out is I was at a party, uh, the Friday before for, you know, with, with a lot of her castmates and stuff that woman wasn't, that was not there, but we were around the same people that weekend. Like we didn't see each other, but we were both around the same people that weekend. So I think somebody involved in the show was carrying, didn't know they were carrying and, uh, gave it to me and, uh, one of the cast members. So because one of the cast members, uh, tested positive they had to postpone the show a weekend and then eventually and then still get um somebody to fill in for that role for the weekend so yeah COVID a week after losing losing uh losing our Gracie girl was not fun um then May rolled around and I was starting to feel, uh, I was, I was, I did a lot of new starts in May. I ended up on, on, uh, unintentionally doing mania. Um, so this is going to be a long video, by the way, cause I have a lot of projects to show you. And plus I'm got this stuff to go over. So, uh, grab a, grab a project, floss up, tuck in, uh, <laughs> Just, uh, this is going to be a long one. I know there's a lot of, a lot of people, <laughs> I know there's a lot of people doing like feature movie length videos these days anyway. So, um, that sometimes takes me two, three days to watch somebody's video because it's an hour and a half, two hours long. So anyway, May comes around. I'm starting to feel mentally capable enough to uh, maybe start filming again. So I'm start. I'm doing a lot of new starts and I'm like, okay, I kind of want to, I kind of want to make a video and start covering these new starts that I'm doing. Maybe do a mid year whip parade and get back into the swing of things. Uh, May 28th hits and I were sitting in the evening watching television. Uh, our cat Ollie's laying on the leg rest with me. I get up to go to the bathroom, he gets up, goes, has a drink of water, walks in the back of the house, and then I hear him vomit. Okay, cat's vomit. That's, I went, and I went back to clean it up, and then I noticed he wasn't moving his back legs. So, we had to rush him to the emergency vet, and, because it was a Sunday night, and, it was, or it might have been a Saturday night, I think it was a Saturday night, no, it was a Sunday. It was it was a Sunday night. Memorial Day was the next day, so that's why I had the day off of work. Um, so twenty, yeah, it was the twenty, yeah. So anyway, rush him to the emergency vet. Find out that he had an unknown heart condition. He had just been a week prior had been to our regular vet. Um, no, she could no detection of a heart murmur or nothing. Um, 
And I guess this, what can happen is there's, with cats is they call it the silent killer because it's really undetectable outside of an echocardiogram, which requires reason to have a referral appointment to a specialist to even get, they have to have a, they have to have suspect something to even order the echocardiogram. Um, and then the echocardiogram can kind of see the walls of the heart, but what happens is the walls of the heart thicken towards the inside of the heart. And what had happened is he got a blood clot, and the blood clot, I guess this happens a lot to, to cats, the blood clot travels to the back of the legs and paralyzes the back legs. And then the cat goes into heart failure. So just whirlwind within everything from everything being fine to losing our second cat that year our second cat this year in a matter of an hour and that it hit me hard losing two cats this year it hit me hard and it took me a long time to be mentally emotionally ready for a lot of things um happier news we uh we did adopt a dog this year we got uh we were we were planning on adopting a dog in the fall anyway regard you know it wasn't because we lost two cats we decided to adopt a dog we were planning to in the fall anyway because we had this window of time where my wife wasn't going to be doing a show where we could find you know we finally felt ready to bring a dog into the house so we've been wanting one for a long time so uh we did have a trial thing with, it wasn't really a trial. It was, we, we adopted, we adopted her. It was a rough weekend. I had, I had a kidney stone. So I was in a lot of pain that weekend and it was a, it was an Australian blue healer. Um, whose name was Bluey and we were going to keep the name cause our nieces love, love the cartoon Bluey. And so we brought her home. They said they said she was good with cats. They showed us a video of her reacting to the to the foster home cat, and come to find out, like we brought her home to our one remaining cat, and because she didn't have any other dogs to play with, her sole fo and we didn't handle the introduction right either, like. But her sole focus, and because it was a herding breed, they want Australian blue blue healers, Australian cattle dogs. They they want they they they're, they they want to herd. Um, so without other dogs there, her sole focus became our cat, and our cat was scared shitless of her. Um, And there was just a few incidents that we realized that our cat was not safe. It would, would never have been intentional, but our cat was not safe. So we, we feared for the safety of our cat. So we, uh, we had to make the decision to uh, return her to the foster. And then a couple weeks later, we, we, found, we found our dog. She's a, her name is Gypsy. She's a Cairn Terrier, Border Terrier mix. We've had her for about four and a half months now. Everything's going great she's she's a bit afraid of the cat which you know the cat's in no danger from her um they're they're getting along better than they did four and a half months ago but she's we go you know, she's doing doggy daycare a, one or two days a week right now and she's we've been through obedience training with her and she loves going into doggy daycare and playing with other dogs and getting some energy out and hopefully eventually you know she'll work out things with the cat and she won't be quite as afraid of the cat so that's where we're at now. That's kind of been my year after losing two after losing two cats this year. It just it took like it hurt. It took a lot. It took a lot out of me mentally. <sighs> Cuz we've since we've lived in this house, we've lived, we've been in the house 10 and a half years. And we have lost four cats since we've moved into the house. We lost one nine years ago this coming Tuesday on December 27th will be the nine year anniversary of losing our first one. And then we lost another one a few years after that in May. So we have two death anniversaries in May now. And I just, 
it just it just hit me hard. It hit me really hard. So enough of that. That but that's where I've been. That's why I've been gone. Um, and I'm finally feeling ready to uh, to come back. So let's get into a whip parade. Um, kind of why I showed that finish early on because I knew I was going to get into this and uh, wanted you to see some stitching right away. Um, so anyway, first thing I want to show. So I have three projects that one of them I was hoping to finish this year, but it's not going to happen. Uh, but I have three projects that I would like to finish next year. I don't know if all three are going to happen. I don't know if all three are going to happen. Maybe a fourth one happens. I don't know. Um, but I have three full coverages. My first is Audrey, and this will get finished in January. This is this is where I'm at with it. And my goal is to finish this in January, by, by the end of January. And I think I can do it. I don't need to show what this is going to look like, because this is pretty much all I got left is her the her leg bent there and background so this is audrey sitting in the window singing moon river in breakfast at tiffany's that has always been a favorite on the channel and by the end of january i'm hoping to finish this if not by the end of january definitely in february um the next one I'll probably get finished in 2024 is Quick Stitch Arthur. And that's where I'm at with that. I'll show what that's going to look like because that's... So that is what Quick Stitch Arthur will look like when it's finished. Okay. So that... This is also hopefully going to give me some, uh, last time you saw this, pictures if I think to snag them. Next is the Outer Frontier, which I've been, sh all these I've been showing as long as I've had, as long as I've been doing floss tube. This is the Outer Frontier. Quick Stitch Arthur is uh, Heaven and Earth Designs, artwork by Linda Ravenscroft. Uh, Audrey is... I got from an Etsy shop. I believe it was called Diana 70 on Etsy. Um, this is artwork by Chris Ortega, charted by Hayde. And I was hoping to get to 50% this year. I'm going to be just shy of it. But this is where I, I'm going to have to scroll up. This is where I am at with it. I've gone, obviously, through a few different ways of stitching this. But she has a full face now. You can see that first connection into her back. And it is conceivable for me to finish this next year. Whether it's going to happen, I don't know. It'll. I'm hoping it'll get finished next year. Definitely in 2025, though. Um... Probably, I'm trying to try to scale down. Like, I'm not going to work trying, I'm not going to try and work on everything that I have within next year because I do want to make some major progress on, on some things. Uh, so those are those three. Uh, I kind of want to show where is it? There's one I want to show before I show other things. Pause one second. I left something upstairs. Okay, I'm back. I had two others that I wanted to make sure I showed in a certain order because it relates to the story I just told you about the cats. So one of my new two, I had two of my new starts this year. First one is Laxadaisy Voodoo. This is artwork by Tracy Butler, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. 90% of my charts are having their designs. In fact, it's Heaven and Earth Designs probably, unless I say differently. I'll try and say differently, because I don't want to say Heaven and Earth Designs 40 sometimes. 
Um, but this is what it'll look like when it's done. And I started this one has, oh, I started this one as a tribute to our first three cats that we had, that had passed. At the time I started this, Oliver had not passed yet. Um, so this represent this cat right here, down here lounging, represents our cat Montana, Monty, that, that passed. This one up here uh, represents our black cat, Dewey, that passed. And this one is our Gracie girl that we lost in January. This, even before we lost Gracie, this picture kind of always reminded me of, of the three of them. Uh, they were together for about seven months or so before we lost Monty. Um, what... Monty and Dewey had been together for a long time, and then we got Gracie. <clears throat> excuse me. In uh, in 2024, <coughs> voice is already getting raw because I haven't done this in a long time. <clears throat> so I, I this I, I bought this because it reminded me of them. And then once we lost Gracie, I decided I was starting it, but I still emotionally had to wait for a bit. So in May, when I was finally starting to get a little bit better, I decided to start it. I decided to start it in the middle because my original plan was I was going to do the middle is about right here where this smoke thing is. So I was going to work over to Monty, to the one represents who represents Monty, and I was going to stitch the cats in the order in which we lost them. <clears throat> got and lost actually now i'm not sh now i'm not fully sure how i want to do it but i do this is what i want to put some major work into especially it's going to be kind of my focus probably this week because we're coming up on the monty's anniversary uh but this is yeah i did a middle start and this is where i am at So, um, so that is that one. Now, I started this not expecting to lose another cat in another week, a week or a half, so probably since I started it. So, once we lost Oliver, I had bought this one when we lost Dewey. And I never got it started. This is artwork by Jeff Haney. And this is Be With You. And my wife actually kind of picked this one out after we lost Dewey. And I just, I, I never got it started. So, since we're now four cats lost, uh, I, get, I finally started it. And it's just a small start. <sighs> right now just up in the corner background but this is another one i want to really start to put some work into because these are tribute pieces so i don't want these just to sit not being worked on oh. next is keeping on the cat theme uh quarantine cats this is artwork by bridget haywood bridget ashwood This I started a few years ago. I, this is actually, I started in 20, 2020. I think I started it during the... You know, it, was a, it was a pandemic release, basically. And I'm just uh, still working in the first page there. Starting to see the bird cage. Drapes are coming into play. I, this one doesn't get pulled out a lot, again... I don't know if this is going to get a lot of work next year or not. Um, I'm still kind of working out my 2024 plans. Um, this one is a brand new start. Uh, this is from Glitch Stitch AU on Etsy. Uh, this is Stardew Valley Christmas. 
Uh, Stardew Valley is one of my favorite computer games, and I've been seeing um, Crafty Gaming Jamie stitching these. There's one kind of for each season, and I've seen Crafty Gaming Jamie stitch the uh, autumn one and, and this one, and I've been wanting to start them. And uh, they're small enough. I had a scrap piece of fabric that fit it just fit it great. So this is all all of these are on either 25 or 28 count. Um, even even weave, Lugano usually. Um, I'm not going to really stay fabric until I get into non full coverage stuff. All one over one full cross. Um, I'm actually going to make a. I've, I've tried tent stitch before and I haven't loved it, but I think it's always because I've tried it converting a. a, a a chart to tent stitch and I because I go bottom left upper right bottom right upper left so my my top crossover stitch is bottom right upper left um that's when I tried to convert I needed to go that way it was weird for me to start a stitch that way and it just I think I need to start a new project using tent stitch and see how I see see how I feel about it so that's actually I think I'm going to start the Hade Sal. The, the, that's how I, of course, I'm going to do the Hade Sal. Um, that's hope. That's hopefully going to be another finish next year, because I want the two free charts. <laughs> if you finish four pages, you get all ten of the Hade Sal Hade Sal charts. I'm doing the uh, astrology cap. And but if you finish the chart, you get all ten Sal charts plus two charts of your choice off the website. And that's what I want. <laughs> Um, we'll see if it happens, but the show where I'm, well, here's where I'm at with just a small start. Um, ah, first non full coverage. So this is Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow, which I have here. This is from Carriage House Samplings. And I'm just going to pull this out because this is where I finished this block a few weeks ago. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I got started on the second block. Now, I had the ambitious thought of trying to do a block a month and finishing this one next year by the end of the year doing a block a month and then that middle one that's kind of two blocks long taking two months to do that um i'm not good at keeping up with plans like that um especially now that the hate sal is a thing and i need to finish a page a month on that um this is a new start this month a very new start um I had intentions of doing, of starting the Year in the Woods charts from Cottage Garden Samplings this year in the month that they came out in. Um, and I started one in June, the Bear, which I'll get to, and then I didn't start another one. Because I, I just, I don't prioritize my non-full coverage charts. And that's another thing I want to try and do next year is try and put a little bit more focus on my non-full coverage charts. But this is the reindeer. I'm doing this on 40 count J, uh, Newcastle linen, the colorway J. Um, it's the color I chose for the three winter charts. Um, this still has a needle and thread in it because I I had to I was I had to stop working on this to to do something else and I never got back to it. But this is my start on this. And then in January, I will probably start uh, the fox. I think it's, yeah, it's the fox that was the, that's number one. So that will probably get started in January. And then the swans will get started in February. I have two more pieces of that fabric to, to start on, on. This is another brand new start. Um, 
This is Cottage Garden Samplings. They are doing this year, they're doing a, fab a Fabulous Houses series. Uh, there it is. So the first release came out in December at Santa's house. Um, I'm kind of like it's a very small start. Just I mean, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to show up, but it's just some of 3865. It's just some white right there, just up in the corner. I bought one piece of fabric to do all of them on. It is 40 count Newcastle linen. It's going to be one over two in the colorway pewter. Um, what I need to try and do uh, for when the next one gets released is at least, at least get that frame over to, over to the other side so that then I can again I want to try and stitch on them in the month that uh, they get released. So I at least need to get over to the other side so that I can plot it out. But the two classic color works flosses that it that it calls for, um, I got one ordered, the ladybug, but it's back ordered and the date that it's gonna be available keeps changing keeps getting pushed back so I may I, I may just end up doing the DMC alternatives on the two classic color works because I can't get them off a of one two three stitch right now and I just don't know I'm just not very familiar with other shops and stuff to know where to get them from and I don't have local L you know I don't have L any LNSs my the two LNSs that were within driving distance for me have both closed um this is okay. This requires a little bit of explanation, and this is Halloween Quaker by Lila Studio, I believe. Yeah, Lila Studio. This is what it looks like, and this is. A, I'm actually starting to pick this out. So this was my start on it. I was doing it 40 count. One over one in, I think it's called a swamp. I think the colorway is swamp. But I, it was, ended up a lot darker than what I thought it was going to be, the, 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 the fabric. Um, and I don't love, I just, I, I don't love, I don't love the color, the way the dark looks on it. It kind of looks better in the camera than it does in person. But I don't love it. So I bought a new piece of fabric for it. And even this piece of fabric didn't come out really the way it showed on 123Stitch. And I'm, I have issues with color anyway. Like it's hard for me to choose and order fabric um, for projects because I, I have color issues. But this is a 40 count in the colorway... Uh, feldspar and so this is i bought a new piece of fabric for it and it is this and you probably can't see it very well but on one two three stitch it showed these like splotches of color a lot being more prominent and i still like it so i'm still i mean i'm, I'm not buying a third piece of fabric for this so this is what it's going to get restarted on but i wanted a lighter colored fabric and that, that was the main thing I wanted a lighter colored fabric because I've seen it done I've seen it completed um, on, on, on lighter fabric um, Megan at Stitching Moon completed it. Her, her fabric color was lighter in fact uh, she bought it after seeing it on my channel I kind of uh, encouraged her to get it um, and she's finished it and I'm, I'm going to do a restart on it so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to reuse this fabric with this Weeks Dye Works Bright Leaf like this. And this I'm going to do the Fox and Rabbit 2024 Mystery Cell uh, on this fabric with 
week sty worth I've, I've got enough I should have enough week sty worth sprite leaf because I bought I, I mistakenly bought three of them when I needed to buy three chalk I just needed to buy three chalk and one bright leaf and I ended up changing my amounts the wrong way and bought three bright leaf and two chalk but then I checked it against that fabric and thought okay that looks good for against that fabric I could do the fox and rabbit 2024 sal on that and I just ordered more bright leaf to make sure I had enough for that and speaking of fox and rabbit designs this is their 2022 sal and this is where I'm at with that I just started working on this again this year and this is on 32 counts murky I think is the color on this Uh, next is, I have a lot of my non-full coverage out right now because I was working, I was trying to put some work into them this month. Uh, Moonlight Sampler from the Blue Flower. This is on 40 counts. Um, I don't remember the color on this. I don't even know if I knew the color on this. This is when I, I still had one LNS uh, near close enough to drive to i bought it there we did we you know we did she pulled the the woman who owned the store she pulled out the flosses um i she pulled out some of the dmcs and i and she she did a floss toss on some fabrics and this is what we decided on for the blue flower that's why i kind of i really miss having a local lns that i could drive to because i'm not good with colors so it's helpful to have somebody else who can do floss tosses and pull out pull out things and help me help me choose colors otherwise everything's just probably just end up on fabrics that i think are going to be one color and show up another color uh, or everything's just going to be on vintage country mocha <laughs> uh what is this ah this is the bear which is oh I left I left that one upstairs. I'm not gonna run up and get that, but this is the bear from the year in the woods. So you can start to see his paw right there. I got the house done. And this will come out again in June. Um this is Big Red Ship of Life from Ink Circles. And that is what that's gonna that one's not gonna show up well but that is what it kind of looks like it's glaring a lot and this is oh you know what i need to take a side of the q snap off to show you this if i was just showing what i'd been working on that would be fine but oh come on okay come on this is where I'm at with it. Not very far. Again, I had grand I had grand thoughts of getting a page a month done on this and finally finishing it up sometime, but that's not <laughs> It's like I I do like a column, column and a half on it and I'm good on it for a while. It's like it's not one I pull out to work on a, a lot. But every once in a while, I get the desire to work on it. This is Witchy Dreams from Barbarianna Designs. This is what it looked like when it's done. This is a uh, 32 count one over two or two over two. And I think it is, uh, this might be a vintage country mocha. I don't remember. I have the sticker on the paper chart upstairs. I forgot to bring it down. But that, oh, again, I need to take off so you can fully see. This is a whip parade, not a, uh, this is what, this is what I've been stitching on this week. So that's where I'm at with it.
again, one I was hoping to finish this year, but it just didn't. I, I just don't pull out my non-full coverage a lot, and I want to try and do better with that. Okay. So, next is one I'm not... This one might end up being a UFO. I'm not sure. But it is the Caterpillar Cross Stitch Halloween Cell from 2022. This is where I'm at with it. I say it might be a UFO just because I just... I don't love it. So, I never feel the desire to work on it. I have a few others that I'm going to... I'll probably show, but I think they're going to end up being, uh, I've pretty much written off a few that I just don't love, that I just don't enjoy working on. This is Gallery of Learning, artwork by Randall Spangler, Heaven and Earth Designs. This is what it'll look like when it's done. This is huge. And this is where I'm at with it. You can see I've been playing around and trying things and This is Secret Door. I started this in 2022. It is artwork, uh, as soon as I find it, in my pattern keeper. Where are you? There you are. Let's get the artist first. Babette Vandenberg. This is what it'll look like when it's done. And I got this one when... Um, I start. Uh, I've ha I actually had had it for a little bit, I think, but I started it when uh, I took in the taken the buyout from where I was working, and it kind of represented to me going going through a door that you don't didn't know where it was leading, but you knew you had to go through it, and I started this when I was going through a job trans th that job transition, and I started this in the top left corner so this is where it is at I'm not sure my I think my camera settings are are in non mirroring I usually are, but I haven't filmed in a long time, so they might have reverted back. So if things end up looking a little backwards, I apologize. Um, this is Mystique. This is artwork by... I want to say... Yeah, I'd have been wrong. Amy Brown. This is where, this is what it'll look like when it's done. And this is where I'm at with it. This is a new start this May. I think it was in May. Um, this I started. This is Meeting at the Turret Stairs. Artwork is by Frederick William Burton. It's part of the Art of the Antiquities collection on Heaven and Earth Designs. And this is what it looks like. I started this because um, I had a good piece of fabric for it. And... Um, I was watching, I believe, um, Bohemian Stitcher, Bohemian Stitcher, Bohemian Stitchery. Um, I'll try and link all the channels that I talk about in the description below. Um, she was talking about doing Fine Art Fridays, and it seemed like something fun to participate in since I was in the at the time, really kind of getting back into things. Um, 
you know, I was doing a bunch of middle starts at that time. So I'm not even sure. Yeah. So this is my start on that. Um, I, part I posted two weeks in a row on the Fine Art Fridays and never got back to doing Fine Art Fridays. Because life exploded. Um, <laughs> this is Chris Ortega. This is Fire Opal. This was a um, special edition. So it is now retired. And I started this in the top left corner. I don't think I need to unfold all this. This is where I'm at with it. This one is... Oh, fuck. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Everything fell. Sorry. <laughs> um... This is artwork by Babette Vandenberg again. This is what it'll look like when it's done. Scroll, story Keep Baldu Mask 9. And this is where I'm at with it. This, I believe, I started last year. Again, this is um, the reason. This is on um, 28 count, one over one. And it's a non white fabric because I was at the LNS. Um, I have a couple that are not on white, a couple of full coverages that are not on white fabric. Um, the, and the more recent ones are um, I was at the LNS, and this, this is what they had in the sizes I needed. They didn't have white in the sizes I needed. Um, this one is a pain free crafts artwork by Chris Dunn. Uh, this is Cheese Delivery, which I always think is named Cheese Shop, but it is not. It is Cheese Delivery. And this is where I'm at with that. This is, like, if if I have, if I can get a fourth full coverage finish in, It'll be this next one, the fourth one. This is Rainy Waterloo Place, London, 1899 from Cross Stitch Collectibles. The artist is not credited uh, on the on the front page of the PDF. Um, uh, if the artist is even known. But that is what it'll look like when it's done. And I need to unfold this. This is where I am at with it. And this is the other one that could conceivably be finished next year if I get if thing but like I said, the hate cell threw threw a wrench into everything I was thinking about. Because <clears throat> I couldn't resist that. Uh, this next one is Venice Moon. It is artwork by Amy Stewart. And again, this is uh, a fabric that this is what she had in the size I, I needed. So I don't know the colorway, but it it works fine. That's where I'm at with Venice Moon. And that is my, I think, biggest most stitches project that one is yeah 499,200 stitches that is not the biggest one I own it's the biggest one I have started I just recently bought a super size max color that I was thinking of making a new year new start but uh I don't know obviously I don't I might order some fabric for it this week uh, I'm not sure but uh I do want to start it. I'll show you what it is. It's not one of my current whips, but I love it. It, it is um, Josephine Wild. And that is what it looks like. 
and I, the, the full color. I wasn't ever going to do a Super Size Max color, but the Super Size Max color, the mock-up looked far superior than the non-Max color Super Size. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I had to buy the, the Super Size Max color. Um, I'm crazy. I know. I will never finish all this in the time I have left on this earth, but it's fun to work on. This is the Muses. Artwork by Tamara Markegaard. Uh, this is what it'll look like when it's done. And this is where I'm at with it. This is one I have gone through a duff, couple of different things. I was going to, what I was going to do is I was going to do that. It's, it's a perfect square. So I was going to do that big, long diagonal to the bottom corner that way. And then you kind of see in the middle where I kind of started um, the other diagonal. What I was going to do is I was going to do one diagonal one way, one diagonal the other way. And just do it that way till I was done. Um, just a weird idea I had. And then I decided, and then I went through and decided against that. And, uh, I started just filling in that middle page there where, where the, where the middle met. And then I thought, no, I want to, I'm just going to start, I'm just going to start working from the corner. And I did that. And <laughs> I just keep, it, it's one, I just keep changing the way I'm working on it. Um, I love the artwork but it's just so much sky and background that I now this next one is a uh, retired tilt and crafts chart called big cats. I don't think the artist is on no, the artist. Oh, yep. Artwork by Tammy Alba. Um, I do love the chart. I don't love my fabric. Um, so I may restart this one next year on fabric I like better. So this is, I, I've had this one in progress for a long time and I don't work on it much because I don't love the fabric. This is a, this is a 28 count and I'm doing one over one, but it is a tea dyed 28 count that I got from Michaels. And at the time I didn't know that a dyed fabric is actually ends up smaller than the account that you have. So especially when I get in here, like in this face of this tiger, these lighter colors, I can't tell where I don't have a stitch sometimes. And the fabric is, itself is just not nice to work with. So I didn't want to restart this because I have a good portion done. I have 21,041 stitches done, but it's 128,000 stitches. And so I still have over 100,000 stitches to do. And if I don't love the fabric, I'm never going to... This is going to get such slow progress. So I might restart this one this year. Because I do still... I don't want to UFO it. I do... It is something I do still want to stitch. Um, this next one is a restart this year. Um, this is Spread Your Wings by Renee Beer Tempfell. And this is, uh... When I had started a few years ago, I had started it up in this corner and I made a major counting mistake and I couldn't figure it out. And I just, I cut the paste, I cut the pat fabric down and used it for something else. Um, but I've restarted it. Yeah, this goes this way. Start. I did a middle start on it so I didn't have to start up. I'll, I'll open that orange again. And... Only took me, I think, a year and a half to two years to restart it, but I finally did restart it. Uh, next is artwork by Chris Down, I believe. Yep, Chris Down. It's called Remember a Day. This is what it'll look like when it's done. And this is where 
I am at with it. I started over here and then I was liking doing a diagonal top left to bottom right. Um, you know, I decided to try and find the other corner and uh, do that for a little bit. And then I've been back to this page. Again, I just, I, I play with the way I'm stitching a lot. But then I still end up going back to a traditional diagonal. This one, this next one, is called Humble Heart. It is artwork by Cindy Mattia. Mattia, M-A-T-Y-A. M-A-T-Y-I. This is what it looks like. I don't pull this one out a lot. This is actually one that if I like tent stitch with the, uh, if I end up finding I like tent stitch, you know, starting a project with tent stitch, um, I might, because I'm, I've got such a little small start on this. I might decide to restart this and do a 10 stitch. I don't know. We'll see. I have a couple of charts that wouldn't be too much for me to restart in 10 stitch and be able to make a little bit further progress on if I, if I, if I find that I do actually like 10 stitch, but I, this one doesn't get a lot of work as it gets really confetti heavy in these, in these spots. You get a lot of block color. But the parts that have detail are really confetti heavy. <clears throat> <clears throat> this one is About Time, our artwork by Cheryl Marchetti. This is the original release of It's About Time. This is now called something else uh, on the website. Um, it's like color version or something. Because um, they released... Uh, a different version that's got like a bluer purpler um shade to it rather than these uh kind of golds and tans um and what's weird is okay so you see the bird right here on this original release of it his shadow is over here and it's kind of weird. I didn't. I never noticed it until they released the newer update of it with the, with the different shading, and his shadow was behind him on that one. So it's weird to me that what they now call the regular "It's About Time" chart has his shadow behind him, and this original release of it. I don't know how his shadow ended up over here. So that's weird. But um, this is this one. This one was. Uh, gifted to me uh, i want to rake um random act of kindness thing on facebook and this was the chart was gifted to me um but this is where i'm at with it this one is one that i had originally ufo'd because i talked about I, I talked about it in a video not loving the fabric on it but i went back to it this year and i actually didn't mind it so much um it's still not my favorite fabric in the world but i didn't mind it as much when I, I tried to go back to it as i did originally and this is fly away artwork by uh jessica elaine jessica elaine come on I have a lot of, I think I have most of her charts. I've only got this one started. And this is where, yeah. This is where I'm at with it. This one is Castle Wolves. Artwork is by... Uh, I thought I knew it off the top of my head. I, I should. Jan Patrick Krasny. This couldn't, couldn't come up with it. This is what it'll look like. Uh, Darren Dizzy Stitcher is working on this one. He's also working on Big Cats as, as well. Um, and this is where I'm at with it. This one is on a 25 count, one over one, full cross. This is one I'll show this one. 
This is this is one of my UFOs. This is artwork by Lee Ahmed Afromov. This was a Facebook paid freebie uh, from in the time when the 0809 thing happened, and Michelle was putting up a bunch of uh, freebies on Facebook. Um, so this is Mini Night Cafe, and that's what it looks like. Um, I just had a small piece of fabric, and I decided to start at one time. Um, and then I also tried to do a um, half-stitch conversion up in this area. And you, and you can't tell, but I didn't love it. Like I said, I didn't love doing the half-stitch the way opposite way from what I was used to doing my first stitch. Um, and I just never pulled it out. I didn't, it wasn't one I loved working on. So, so I... For right now, it's a UFO. Um, this one, artwork by Stephanie Puyman Law. It's a, this was another Haid freebie. This was actually a website freebie. This is Disintegration. Again, This I think this is going to be a UFO because I just, I don't pull it out. I don't, it's not one I lean on. I don't ever go to it and... You know, like my like fabric is stained down here and for for now this is a ufo and i i would eventually have to start tearing this out this was something else and i would eventually have to start tearing this out and i don't know if i actually really want to do that so this is a ufo for now maybe i'll restart it someday a uh, clean piece of fabric again another stephanie Poyman law that is uh small i could finish it i mean i could totally finish it within a year it's it's there's no reason i shouldn't have it finished it's just i don't ever pull it out it's like i don't love working on it it is uh story keep labyrinthine spring and i'm mostly only showing these because if anybody's been following me since the start of my floss tube knows might you know recognize these charts and um so this is where it's at but for now it's a ufo i don't even really count it among my whips right now because it's not one i enjoy working on uh, that is scrap fabric this is julie fane artwork by julie fane enchanted glimpse this is where it's at this one's a lot of black and this is where i'm at with it I originally was going to outline, I was going to do all the black first, so I was outlining the areas where the black was, and that's why, that's why you have this down here, but, um, and then I found the other corner, um, but yeah, again, I don't pull this one out a lot. My pattern keeper keeps closing, that's not helping me. This one is Yellow Submarine. It is part of um, what is that? Blackbird Designs um, Beatles collection. They call it they call it the uh, Magical Mystery Tour series. I have a couple of them, but I only have one started. This is on a thirty-two count cobble, dark cobblestone Lugana. Two over two, full cross. And that's my start on it. I haven't made it very far. This I don't have a picture of. This is from Ingleside Imaginarium on Etsy. This is the Witch's Familiar Sal. Again, this... I don't ever pull this one out, so I don't know if I'm going to continue on with this one or not, but that's where I'm at with it. But I don't think I've pulled this out in a year and a half easy. This I don't ever go to because I'm intimidated by it. But this is Raven Queen from Mirabilia. 
but I do have a small start on it. It is on 32 count Storm Lugana. Uh, but that's my small start on my first Mirabilia. It intimidates me. I also can't get a nice clean working copy of the chart, so that annoys me. I have so many charts. And we're at an hour ten. I still got so many charts left. I got to speed up because my parents are going to be here in like a half an hour. For... It is Christmas Eve as I'm filming this. So to all of those who celebrate, uh, Merry Christmas. Um, we just have my parents over for dinner. Um, and then tomorrow we're just going to spend the day, us and the animals, you know, for Christmas Day. Um my wife's got the next week off work, but I do not. So we just wanted to have my parents over tonight because we just wanted a day to ourselves. This is artwork by... Oh, wrong chart. This is artwork by Jeremiah Kettner. This is uh, In This Moment. Dang it. This is In This Moment. This I saw on Jesse Marie Dove Stuff's channel. She just finished this and I loved it and I needed to start it. This next one is Writing My Memoirs, artwork by Jeff Haney. And that's got a white border around it that is um, in the PDF. It's got a black border around it, and I think it pops off that black border. So I gave myself the extra task of stitching the black because it is not charted. And this is where I'm at with it. But I gave myself extra work to do on that one. This is one I saw on Dizzy Stitcher's channel and really liked it. This is... Uh, Pain-Free Crafts, artwork by Stanley Morrison. This is Blackberry Dragon. And this is my... I'm not even sure which way this goes. Okay, there we go. This is my small start on it. This is one of my May starts. This next one is uh, artwork by Annie Steg. This is called Stolen Harvest, and I've got two, no, I've got four pages done on this. I've got basically a block of the top two, bottom two of the first four pages done. And then I've just kind of been deciding where I want to go with this one next. I do enjoy working on it, but it is a very high stitch count. This one is Simply Meant to Be, artwork by, oh crap, Cherie Gerhardt. I'm like, I used to know this off the top of my head, but this is a Nightmare Before Christmas chart, and this is where I'm at with it. I have played with the way I'm stitching this one a bit. Again, this is not one I pull out very often. So I don't even know if it's going to get any focus this year because I, a lot of, some of these aren't going to get work this year just because <clears throat> I want to put serious focus into some, some other things. This is The Hanged Tree by Chris, artwork by Chris Ortega. This is what it looks like. And this is where I'm at. Sorry, I'm kind of speeding up a little bit because um, my time is getting short. And I've already been going for an hour and 15 minutes. But I had stuff I needed to talk about first. Um, this is another restart. This is Eclipse. Uh, artwork is by... Again, I want to say Chris Down. Yep, yeah, Chris Down on this. And anybody who's been uh, with me since the start will kind of remember this one. I had started it... What the heck? I had started it down here in this corner, and I didn't love where I started it, so I ended up cutting the fabric down and using it for something else. 
I know this time I did a middle start. And this is where I'm at with it. This next, next one is called Inner Depths by Chris Ortega. If you notice, I like Chris Ortega's artwork. So this is where this one is. And this is kind of a companion piece to Outer Frontier. There's Outer Frontier and Inner Depths. Because you see the hookups going into her back. And this is where I'm at with this one. I did these two pages. And then I decided I decided I wanted to start working on her face. So I started over here. And now I'm just not sure where I want to how I want to handle it. Uh, okay. This next one is the Lola Crow Greenhouse of Oddities um, Sal. I decided to try that this year. I did not keep up with it. But that is what it looks like when it's done. I chose the George Washington Carver for the dude. Um, I do. I apologize. I do not remember the colorway of this fabric, but that is where I'm at with it. It is 32 count, two over two. This is Witchy Stitcher's Universal Monster Sal, which I haven't touched this year. I don't think. Again, these next couple, I don't remember the colorways. They're 32 count. I know that. Um, and then this is Witchy Stitcher's um, Cryptids cell that I didn't make it very far on. Again, 32 count, 2 over 2, and I don't remember the colorway. I think I have it somewhere. I just don't have it near me uh this is that it crowd piece i was talking about it was my actual first finish years ago this is when i was deciding if i liked stitching uh this is once upon a fairy tale or you know um Amy Stewart. I probably don't even need to show the mock-up on this. Most people, I think, are familiar with this, but that's what it looked like when it's done. This is where I'm at with it. I can hear my wife singing upstairs. I don't know if it's bleeding through. Uh... If it is, uh, enjoy. She's a beautiful singer. And uh, I also hope I doesn't, I can't, it can't be heard enough that I get hit with a copyright. <laughs> this is another start this year. This is Cat Race. This is artwork by Jeff Haney. This is uh, what it looked like when it's done. And this is where I'm at. Next one is Mermaid. Artwork is by Elena Lazareva. You are not helping, tablet. That's what it looked like. And this is where I'm at. This is another new start this year in May. I went crazy in May. I went absolutely apeshit. Uh, this is called Scorpio. This is artwork by Ruth Thompson. This is uh, one of her um, Zodiac series. And I'm not a Scorpio. I just absolutely loved the artwork on it. The wolves, the dragon in the background. And... Yeah. This is where I'm at with it. Oh, 
Okay. This is a recent new start. This is an unconventional cross stitch. Um, artwork is by Borda Danut Adrian. This is called Life is a Dance in the Rain version 2. And I just have a small start on that. Okay. Getting in the home stretch. This is another unconventional cross stitch. Uh, it's a new start this year. Uh, again, artwork by Borda Denote Adrian. Didn't, I didn't even realize that. And this is called A Cozy Evening. And I fell in love with this one. Had to start this one. What the heck? And I'd been wanting to start some unconventional cross stitch charts anyway. I needed I needed to start. I decided I needed to start working on charts that weren't having inert designs. Um, this one's charting creations. This is one of my. This is actually one of my favorite charts to work on. This is artwork by um, Dusan Markovic. This is called Scotty, Goddess of the North. And I have done some different things with this one uh, okay so this is where I'm at with this one um, I started this one I started this one up in this corner and then if you, some of you might remember I did this big long diagonal 10 10 by 10 diagonal and what I liked about that was I got to work on different parts of the chart. So then I did another big 10 by 10 by day. And then I decided to go find this other corner. And then I decided to work on the second page. And then I decided to start filling in this page. And now I'm back to doing a 20 by a 20 stitch diagonal this way. But no matter which way I work on this chart, I love working on it. So this one is going to get some major progress this year because it is going to be one of my focus pieces this year because I would like to finish it in 2025 I love working on this one uh, this one is Dragonkin artwork by um, oh what's her name crap and Ann Stokes That's what it'll look like when it's done. And this is where I'm at with it. And this is where I started doing, decided to do a bunch of middle starts in May because this one started, the center point was right inside the dragon's, the little dragon's mouth. So I knew if I started in the middle, I got to do the dragon's head. So that's why I, I ended up starting doing a bunch of middle starts last year. This is um, artwork by Cheryl Marchetti. It is called Oracle of Visions. And this is where I'm at with it. This next one is artwork by Dominic Davison. This is one of my older whips. It is called Sunset in Venice. And this is where I'm at with it. Two more. Almost done. Okay. This is... Uh, I want to say this is Cho Marchetti, but I'm not sure. It is Cho Marchetti. Um, African Mammals. And this is my start on it. And this is, I want to say artwork by Bridget Ashwood. I am right. I don't want to add the legend. This is Autumn Queen.
and this is where I'm at with it. I don't. I I know why I have this weird triangle that's not not stitched because this is a whip go piece. And I was in here in some confetti area and I was looking for a stitch count. I was looking for a thousand stitches. And I wanted to move on to something else. So I went up here and did some uh, one color to knock to knock out the last little bit of stitches I needed for my thousand stitches for Whip Go. Which I did better on. I didn't complete Whip Go. But I did better on it this year than I've ever done. I got two lines finished, and I've never gotten two lines finished. Usually, I, my, like my 2021 chart, my 2022 card, uh, I even stopped marking the month that things were called. So, I mean, I have everything marked this month and this year in two, two, uh, two lines finished. I ended up switching everything. I had everything as a page finish, and I ended up switching it to a 1,000 stitches. But... Um, in the grand scheme of the number of projects, a thousand stitches isn't a lot. Uh, or, grand, or grand scheme of one, how many st projects I have, and two, uh, the stitch counts of these projects. A thousand stitches isn't, it's not nothing, but it's not a lot either. So, uh, I'm working on kind of refocusing and getting some major progress in on some things, finishing a few things. I have more non-full coverage starts that I want that I want to do next year. Um, I may get a plans a 2024 plans video done this week. I may not. I may just start in January, starting to show progress on things. Um, but I do want this is my getting back into the swing of things and in the, back into the community of floss tube. Uh, because I have missed it, I I stitch, and I've got no one to show it to, uh, no one to really talk about it with. Um, my wife's excited for me, but she really doesn't care that much about it. <laughs> um, she she cares that it makes me happy, but as far as uh, someone to talk to about it. You know, I show her. I'll, I'll show her when, like, when I got the face done on, on the Outer Frontier, and of course she was excited for me, and like that's really cool. And but that's about as far as it goes, you know. So, um, yeah, that is my 2023 whip parade. That was about 20 minutes of where I've been uh, at the beginning. So thank you if you've made it to the end of this. Uh, thank you. Um, say hi in the comments. Maybe just. Even just drop an emoji to let me know you were here. Um, if you if you don't got nothing to say, um, and I'm um, I'm I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be in, in a mental space better where uh, I I feel like I can come back to this. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit. I'm gonna show you Ginger. That is our our Ginger. She's our our remaining cat um, filming in the basement so uh, the dog is not allowed in the basement because it is Ginger's safe space it's where her litter is it's where her food we have her food down here now and it is it is her space that she can escape from the dog into so we have, we have a cat door installed into the basement door that she can get through and the, and the, the dog can't the dog doesn't even go near it uh, because one time she did try to stick her nose in it, Ginger was on the other side, and she let her know that what that wasn't allowed, and she's never tried again. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so the, I, I, I won't, can't show you the dog down here because the dog can't come down here. Um, and I wanted to show you a picture of the dog, but Facebook is being stupid on my tablet and not, and not. Every I, I try to log in and it just says timed out. It's not letting me get into Facebook on my tablet. So I couldn't pull up one of the pictures that are on Facebook of of Gypsy because uh, I couldn't get into Facebook on my tablet and I film on my phone. So I can't show you from my phone either. And I'm not going to do any editing, so I'm not going to insert a picture either. Um Anyway, I hope you were all well. I hope your holiday season 
has has been a good one. Um, obviously, it's a little sad time for me because we lost our first cat so close to after Christmas nine years ago. So, um, if if this if if the holidays, I know the holiday season can be a struggle for many. So I hope everybody please takes that into account and treats everybody with respect and dignity and, and, and kindness. Um, because it's not a merry time for everybody, but I hope it is, I hope it is good for everybody. And for those that struggle, I hope I send you my love and, uh, warm hugs and, yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to end this on a downer, but I, I just felt that I needed to say that. Anyway, I will hopefully see you uh, in a week or two. I may do a plans video. I may not. I'm not sure. Um, as a matter of, it's just it depends on if I ever even work out my plans. But um, have a good Christmas, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one, not a year from now. <sighs>